Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is my Finishing the Bible in One Year Project, and we are in day 322. Today we are in the book of Acts, and we'll be reading chapters 13, 14, and 15 today. So let's get started with Acts 13, the first missionary journey. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas, Simeon, that was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, and Manian, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord, they fasted. Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas, and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. When they had fasted and prayed, and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they, being sent forth of the Holy Ghost, by the Holy Ghost, depart unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. When they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. They, also, they had also John to their minister. And when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar Jesus, which was the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Eliamas, the sorcerer, for it is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. And the deaf beauty, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Now when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, they came to Perga in Pamphylia, and John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand, said, Men of Israel, and ye that fear God, give audience. The God of his people of Israel choose our fathers, and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt, and with a high arm brought he them out of it. And about the first time of forty years suffered he their manners in the wilderness. When he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Chanan, he divided their land to them by lot. And after he gave them judges about the space of four hundred and fifty years, until Samuel the prophet. And afterward they desired a king, and God gave them unto them Saul, the son of Cease, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of forty years. When he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised to Israel a Savior, Jesus. When John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel, and as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he, but behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth God, to you is the word of this salvation sent. For they that dwell at Jerusalem, and they their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulchre. But God raised him from the dead, and he was seen many days of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto the people. 
We declare unto you glad tidings, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God hath fulfilled the same unto us, their children, in that he hath raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption, he said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Wherefore he saith also in another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom God raised again saw no corruption, being known unto you therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that we believe are justified from all things, which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Beware therefore lest that come upon you which is spoken in the prophets, Behold ye despisers, and wonder, and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declared unto you. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. The next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy, and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light to the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad, and glorified the word of the Lord, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coasts. But they shook up the dust of, of their feet against them and came unto Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. And the Jews just did not want to hear it at all. I am so thankful that God sent Paul to be the to be the one that reaches out to the Gentiles. Amen to that. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a chance. Acts 14, verse 1. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake, that a great multitude both of Jews and also of the Greeks believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. Long time Therefore abode they, speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles. And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles, and also of the Jews with their rulers, to use them despitefully, and to stone them, they were aware of it, and fled unto Lystra and Derbe, cities of Laconia, and unto the region that lieth round about. And there they preached the gospel, and they sat certain a man at Lystra, and put it at his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, and perceived that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. And when the people saw that Paul had done, they lifted their voices, saying in the speech of Laconia, The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they called Barnabas, Jupiter, and Paul, Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands into the gates, and would have done sacrifice with the people, which when the apostles Barnabas and Saul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out, and saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and the earth and the sea and all things that are therein, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, and that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. 
And with these sayings scarce restrained they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Albeit as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. And when they had preached the gospel to the city, they had taught many, and returned again to Lystra, and to Iconium, and to Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples, and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. And when they had ordained them elders in every church, and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord, on whom they believed. And after they had passed through Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia. And when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down into Atalia, and thence sailed to Antioch, and whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. And when they were come and got, had gathered the church together, they had rehearsed all that God had done with them, and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And there they abode long time with the disciples. Acts 15, verse 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other, the other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. So there were some conflicts within the church. Some people are saying, you have to be circumcised physically to be able to be saved. And um, we're going to see here in a minute, Paul and Barnum's going to be like, no, you, so you got to be circumcised with the Spirit. Baptized with the Spirit. I mean, not physically baptized. Not physically circumcised. Yeah, being physically baptized is an outward sign of your inward uh, change, but... In your inward belief but it is not necessary for salvation what matters is your spirit being baptized with the holy spirit all right <clears throat> being brought on their way by the church they passed through Phoenice and samaria declaring the conversion of the gentiles and they caused great joy unto all the brethren and when they were come to jerusalem they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders and they declared all things that god had done with them but there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying, That it was needful to circumcise them, and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for the, to consider this manner. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel, and believe. And God which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. By faith. That's the important part right there. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Wow, that's a good, good uh, counterpoint. See, they wanted to put the yoke, so to speak, on the Gentiles, a yoke which they couldn't even bear. The yoke of, you know, the commandments and uh, being circumcised and doing what's right in the eyes of God. That's a good point right there. What a good argument, counter-argument. Why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved, even as they. There you go, Acts 15, 11. That's another important part. We believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved. Because it is grace that saves us. Grace and mercy. Then all the multitudes kept silent silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them and after they had held their peace James answered saying men and brethren hearken unto me Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name and to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written after this I will return and build again the tabernacle of David which is fallen down 
and I will build up again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication, from things strangled and from blood. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preached him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Then it pleased the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barsabbas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner, the apostles and elders and brethren send greeting unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. For as much as we have heard that the certain which went out from us have troubled you with words subverting your soul, saying, You must be circumcised and to keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandments. So there you go right there. We are not under the Old Testament. We are not under the law. Today we are under grace. Today we are under faith. Faith in the blood of Christ. We are not under strict law. Um, when I say that, that means, yeah, it's good to follow the Ten Commandments. Yeah, it's good to, to keep that. But it's not like a make or break sort of thing. It's not like if we break one, we're going to go to hell like in, in the Old Testament, where if we break one of the Ten Commandments, we would be stoned or whatever. We are under grace now. We are under grace. And we don't have to be physically circumcised, nor do we have to follow the Ten Commandments like they did in the Old Testament. It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which ye, if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well. Fare ye well. So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch, and when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle, which when they had read, they rejoiced for the consolation. And Judas and Silas, being prophets also themselves, exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. After they had tarried there a space, they were let go in peace from the brethren unto the apostles. Notwithstanding, it pleased Silas to obey there still. Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord, with many others also. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brother in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord, and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia, and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from another. So Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, confirming the churches. Alright. Interesting stuff. I could just sit here all day and read Acts. Because it's so interesting. Here's the daily promise. Isaiah 119. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Here's the reflection, and I quote, even as God promised to bless his people under the old covenant, how much greater is the blessing under the new covenant? Every believer is already granted all spiritual blessing in the realm heavenly, and more, for soon all of God's children will rejoice together in fulfillment of their promised heavenly rest, drinking from rivers of living water and eating the very tree of life itself. End quote. Amen to that. We are not under the old covenant. We are under the new covenant. Amen to that, and thank you, Lord, for breaking us from that. They call it a curse. It's in the Bible. They call it a curse. The old, being under the old, the old testament and the old, uh, the commandments is a curse. But we are not under the commandments anymore. We're not in the old testament anymore. 
we are in the New Testament. We are saved by grace and faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's pray. Dear Yehovah, our Elohim, our Abba, thank you for this day and thank you for our lives. Thank you that we get to read your word and learn and understand. Please give us discernment so we can rightly divide your word of truth and keep all that we read in our hearts and minds. Please help us be an example to others and reach others for your sake and for your glory that they may know the free gift of salvation if only they by faith reach out and take it. It's a free gift. They only have to have faith and trust in the blood of Jesus. They will live forever. Please lead us and guide us and show us your will for our lives. Let thy will be done. And thank you so much for all that you've done for us, all that you're doing, and all that you will do. I pray in Christ Jesus' precious holy name, Yeshua. Amen, amen, and amen. So thank you guys so much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great evening, morning, noon, wherever you're at. And as always, TTFN, ta-ta for now. Take care. God bless. Remember to put God first in everything you do. Have faith in him, have trust in him, and wait upon him, and you will never be sorry. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.